the clay stamps that I use to make my patterns. So everybody's got a bag of clay that got too hard sitting around and maybe it came from the supplier a little hard. And if you let that stuff get really hard, this is as hard as maybe Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna take my steel blade here and push it down in to chop off a piece of clay. Now I have an idea of about what size I wanna use. So I'm gonna keep chopping this until I get the shape that I want. I like to make these as clean as possible because they're gonna last a long time and I have to look at it for a long time. So once I get it to this state, I might take it and, and shave it down a little bit with a, with a loop tool just to flatten it off and maybe even take these corners off so that it feels nice in your hand when you go to use it. And then I'd smack it down on this masonite board to get it really smooth and flat. So now I have to decide what image I'm going to put on here. And um, I brought with me this uh, page of an illuminated manuscript that I printed off from the internet. I found this manuscript page. And even though I blew it up and it's kind of blurry, I went in and traced around with a pen on many of the different leaves and shapes that are on here. And the interesting thing about going through the process of tracing over the design is that it shows you the variation in the different leaves. And maybe I don't need to make six different leaves to produce this pattern, but surely a leaf going in one direction and a leaf going the other direction would be nice. But I think I'll just do a pretty straightforward leaf on here. And I like to use this tool, which is actually uh, sold in craft stores for uh, plastic clay or Fimo. And um, it's got a little rubber tip on one end and a little metal ball on the other end. And you can use it to trace out the image um, of the leaf or whatever you're going to draw right onto the clay. So I'm going to draw the vein on first, and then I'll draw the outside of this leaf. And I can decide whether these are pointy or how they're going to go on here. I don't want to put too much pressure and dig too deep into it because then I'll have created um, a spot where it's low and you want the part that's going to press into the clay has to be the highest part of this of this image. But I'm just roughly like I said tracing that on and then I'll cut away the outside clay with an X-Acto knife. I want to angle this X-Acto knife a little bit because if I go straight down into the clay, it'll make a stamp that's a little bit weaker. And I'm not trying to be too precise with this line because I'm going to go in and refine it later. This process takes a little while and I find it interesting to have part of the process be very time consuming and detail oriented. And then another part of the process is really sort of quick and in, I can use my intuition when it comes to actually using these stamps on a piece. So once I put the time into making the individual stamps, then I can decide how I'm going to use them in a, in a quick way. I'm going to have this ridge stand up on the inside. So I'm just going to cut a little shallower on the inside. I don't want that to be too deep. So I'm going to cut away this extra clay that I just cut off and like where the the ridges of the leaf are I can poke in there with my knife. The other thing I'm trying to do when I cut away the outside of the clay here is I want to angle this down a little bit so that these these areas drop away from the stamp. And the reason for that is when I'm rolling the stamp, if, if these sides and corners are too close to the, um, to the edges, then the edges of that image, then they'll print on the clay too. So I want to have everything angled away. And then I like to go in with a small loop tool and clean this up around the outside. I'm going to push it down to keep it flat and press that in and slide it a little bit on this smooth masonite and it'll really give me an idea of how this is going to print. 
on my tiny brush here, I can brush away some of those crumbs. It's a, it's a back and forth battle between uh, trying to get detail into a stamp and having too much that, that once it gets printed, it won't really read properly. So I want to get rid of all the extraneous, I guess, information there. Now I want to do uh, the interior here. I'm going to drop down uh, the inside and try to put this vein in so that it will print down into the clay. Again, I don't want it to be, don't want to dig too deep in here because I'd like to have some dimensionality of this leaf show up. Now these things really need to be fired before you can use them. But if you get some soft clay ready, you can actually test it to see what it looks like to refine it. So I'll take my piece of soft clay. I just need a flat enough surface to do a test. That looks okay. Didn't get the stem in. There we go. It's got a little issue right here. When you press down in, this spot here wasn't cleaned up enough. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Now if you test it too much, it will start to absorb the clay or absorb the water and you'll end up ruining your stamp. So it's a very... Um, you have to be careful how many times you're going to test it. So you need to make sure that you bisque fire it to a temperature where the clay is going to get hard enough that it will resist breaking and chipping apart like bisqueware can. I fire mine to uh, cone 08 in the bisque kiln and they seem to last a long time that way.